Welcome back to another episode of On The Ball. I'm your host, Gabriel, and uh, this is Talking Points, the show where we talk about what happens over the football weekend. But as you know, there's not really much football in terms of Premier League, so we're just busy having discussion-based topics and things that might be interesting for somebody as a football watcher to listen to and today i've got a very special guest with me a united fan as well as am i uh this is mr conrad julik conrad how are you today good thanks how are you doing gabriel thanks for having me yeah of course man i'm doing fantastic as well conrad uh is a football coach he plays football as well as i said earlier he's a man united fan and uh, he because we stay in a small town or collectively a few towns it's called the vault triangle he actually founded a soccer club called saints football club somewhat eight or so years ago if i'm not mistaken yeah yeah it's about eight years ago 2012 yeah so he's uh you know what there's it's it's difficult finding opportunities for some players around here to to really get into football seriously so he thought because we didn't have such opportunities as kids how about we try and give opportunities as kids um well two kids right now which i think is uh is absolutely fantastic so that's 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 awesome conrad and uh, you can check out a link in the description to the website uh where you can find out all sorts of information about saints football club and uh now conrad the reason you're here or the reason we're having this discussion by the way we are following uh social distancing rules we're doing this chat remotely uh because we are in a current we're currently in a lockdown and we're unable to see each other but anyway um manchester united how impressed have you been since the arrival of bruno fernandez at man united Look, Bruno Fernandes was uh, was a key player, um, I think, not only physically and uh, on the field, uh, tactically, but as well as um, um, just as a, a morale booster for the for the team and for for the supporters of uh, Man United since he, he came in to, to Man United. Yeah, he's he's been fantastic and he's played just about what nine Premier League matches, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And in those nine games, he's he's made a phenomenal, phenomenal impact. Um, oh, you can see, you can definitely see the the impact that he's uh, you know created in the in the team. Um, you know, from from scoring goals, the way he celebrates, uh, to to trying to give those uh, through balls that United weren't uh, previously used to in the last uh, couple of uh, months. Um, succumbing to injuries of obviously all the all the other players, and um, and uh, his frustration when you know the players can't get to that uh, to get that through ball, uh, you know it's it's definitely a positive for for United. And the big question, I think this is a question that's been on the minds of every Man United player. Do you think that Bruno and Pogba can play together? Do you think they're capable? Absolutely, I absolutely. I think it's just a, a media during these times where uh, you know uh, Pogba was uh, was injured, and uh, you know media was just doing speculations. You know his transfer that he doesn't want to play for United. Uh, look, look at Pogba as as a player. Um, if he wasn't so famous because of his uh, big transfer that he had to to United, and um, I mean this is a, a second place Euro, this is a World Cup winner, uh, this is an all round player, you know this guy's got leadership qualities that you want. Uh, so Bruno and uh, Pogba playing together, I think it's going to be a phenomenal th- a phenomenal thing to to watch. Uh, I agree, and uh, I honestly. Bruno, when he first came in, uh, not to sound sort of mean to the other players, but it almost seems like he was too good for to be a current Man United player, or at least the current team that we have. But it seems as though Pogba, if he goes and plays with Bruno, then it'll sort of be like a ballot. It won't just be Bruno, if that makes any sense. It won't just be him who's thinking at a higher level to the other player in terms of the things that he must do, the passes he must make, uh, the runs to get into certain positions for other players to be more effective, you know, things like that. I think that they're going to gel quite well together and I'm I'm super excited. I'm extremely excited to see this happen. 
Look, you gotta you gotta see the, the dynamics of when uh, Bruno came to to United squad. Uh, Bruno came to a squad when we were most desperate, when we had the most uh, injuries, when uh, we needed wins the most, when uh, the guys we didn't have creative uh, players, when we had uh, Rashford uh, injured, we didn't have uh, a striker. And uh, you know, Bruno came in at the at the right time to give a morale booster to the current players that were playing at the time, the ones that weren't injured. And uh, you know, coming in now into into after this uh, virus, if we know if we can get into to the matches uh, with the injury list now basically eliminated. Now we're going to see some magic happening, and uh, Paul Bogba and uh, and Bruno playing together, and uh, Paul Bogba as well now be able to play a more of a free role, mm. especially if you look at uh, other players having um, you know picked up their standards. If you look at uh, uh, Shaw, if you look at uh, Williams, if you look at Fred, I mean, geez, Fred in the last couple of games he was. Um, he was he was phenomenal. He was he was absolutely amazing. He's uh, been incredible. Uh, you know, he's, well, not that he was amazing, but he was a, he was a workforce. Mm. You know, he was running, he was chasing. Uh, so now Pogba will have more of that free role, that the the role that is suited for for him, rather than being that uh, defensive mid, which is more of a Matic uh, position, more of a McTominay uh, position. Uh, so those two playing together, Bruno and Pogba, and I mean, we saw those uh, through balls uh, of Bruno, we saw those long through balls of Pogba. Now, could you imagine the combination of the two? Uh, and, uh, you know, with the right strike force, it's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Do you think that we need a better central defensive midfielder than the ones we currently have? Or do you think that Fred, McTominay, uh, Matic will be able to cut it? Will be able, because let's, let's be real, as Man United fans, we're craving to see our team get back to challenging for the title. We don't just want to try and make Champions League. We want to get back right to the top, to the very best um, that Man United can be. Do you think that McTominay, Fred, Matic, these current players are enough in that position uh, to be competing with other players in that position, such as Kante, such as Fernandinho, such as Jordan Henderson, who's been fantastic for Liverpool. For for me, when we talk about uh, defensive uh, midfielders, um, you know, there's been a lot of criticism about uh, Matic, but I think that was more to do with uh, the fact that we weren't winning games, that we weren't uh, scoring. Uh, in terms of defensive mid, um, man, we've got we've got one of the best in the world. Uh, Matic has, and still today, I believe, is one of the most uh, best um, defensive midfielders around. If you look at the, the way he plays with so much confidence, the way he holds a ball, and uh, even when he's got pressure, he doesn't feel the pressure. He holds the attackers or the midfielders back, and he lays it off exactly where, where he wants it. Obviously, he lacks a little bit when he goes up front, but defensively, he's uh, brilliant. Uh, Fred uh, came up through the through ranks. You know, he struggled a little bit in the, in the beginning. Uh, but the last couple of games, I mean, you know, he showed his, his worth. He showed that he's, he's willing to, 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 to work for, for his position. Uh, he might not be all there just yet. Um, but I mean, give him give him one more season, and this guy will be amazing. Same as uh, McTominay, I was I was never fond or keen of him because he was a defensive uh, midfielder, and uh, he was a youngster. But uh, I I didn't see him much on the ball. But, I mean, just look at uh, the last couple of months, and then before his injury, and uh, uh, the last couple of games uh, after his injury. Um, you know, this is that's that was to me world class. When he has to defend, he has to defend. He's got that Scottish uh, hot blood uh, mentality, you know, where where he fights. So defense, defensive midfielding. Um, I don't think we we we've got a problem there. All right, no, that does make sense. Um, I personally, when we signed Matic, I believe we signed him the same time as Lukaku. I sent out a tweet. I was wrong at the time, uh, but I sent out a tweet after the first game of the season. I think we won four 0 that game. Uh, was, it was we ran right. I believe it was Mourinho's first season in charge, and I said Lukaku and Matic will be the reason Manchester United win the league again. Those were my words. Unfortunately, I was mistaken because that was a season Manchester City just uh, went riot. I believe we came. Uh, that was when I think they won by like 18 points. That was the the Centurions, Manchester City Centurions. And um, but the way that 
Matic played that first season. Uh, I think that should he be in the right position, should he have the right players around him where he can do his job? Because if you would, if you were to watch Man United's matches um, before Bruno came, it sort of seemed like Matic was trying to do his best to do all the roles. So he was trying to play defensive mid, he was trying to play the box-to-box -box midfielder, he was trying to push that ball up to attack, etc. And that's not what he's supposed to do. He's an intelligent um, defensive mid and he cuts passing lanes really well. He intercepts really well. You know, you things know, like when, that. When, uh, when Matic uh, came to, to United, I said that that was uh, Chelsea's downfall. Uh, that was when uh, Chelsea sold their, their title, basically. Uh, because Matic to me defensively and uh, such intelligent and a strong player um, you know he there, there must be any kind of rumors of him being sold oh yeah yeah um, I, I, I do believe he signed an, another an, a year extension at Man United so um, he'll be there for at least an extra year uh, if I'm not mistaken it was the same time that Chong signed his extension to his contract for Man United so uh, looks like he's here to stay if anything um, he is getting a lot older but if anything he is an experienced player and I'm quite sure that he's a leader in the locker room as well so he's somebody that someone like McTominay can look to and say you know what this is what you used to do do you have some advice for me how is it that I can be better in the position that I'm playing and you know Fred as well is quite young he's uh, 25 years old and um, he can also continue learning he's I, th I think he's had a phenomenal season though um, He's, he's really improved. He's been a workhorse. If I'm not mistaken, I did see a statistic where it said that Fred was leading the league in ball recoveries in the in the Premier League. So uh, that's a big step up from him having struggled in the beginning. So, uh, you know what? I'm quite happy. You know what? Uh, not just that I'm quite happy, but I can't think of a realistic signing Man United could make in the defensive midfield role that could be better than the options we have available. I think no, that's the right way for me to put it. Absolutely not. If you if you are going to do a signing for a, a defensive mid, um, you know you you get a you get as one that is is a backup. It's not your not your first choice. You've got McTominay. He's uh, is is absolutely brilliant he's shown his uh, he's shown his worth you've got uh, fred which is just going to improve season on season end and uh, you know this is uh, this is a youngster and uh, much as you might say you know he's old he's i think is about 32 he's still got uh, a good three years you need that kind of experience especially when it comes to 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 defending uh, you need the smart players to to be able to relieve the pressure of the defenders you need uh, that uh, that the defensive mid in order to to play the ball through and you need a smart guy like like Matic and Matic for me is uh, he's still got another another good three years more left at uh, United Oh, and I was completely mistaken. Fred is actually 27 years old, not 25 years old. But, well, he's still relatively young as a footballer. Uh, but yes, what you did say about Matic, that is quite true. Um, he's 31 years old, so he's not far past his time. You know, he's not like Fernandinho, who's at 35, who you can really tell is um, it's almost time to retire. You know, as good as he's been but at some point your legs just aren't going to carry you or they're not going to do what your mind wants to do no matter how like how how much you want to do it if that makes sense the the, the mind will always be there the yeah. the legs the legs won't yeah. but at the age of 31 uh you know when we talk about football what is old in in football you know you look at the likes of uh, ronaldo you look at the likes of uh, vincent company uh, of uh, Sergio, of uh, you know, a lot of these uh, experienced players, and in the position that uh, Matic is playing, he doesn't need the legs. He's not a box-to-box -box, uh, player, and uh, you don't need him to be that. You just need him there to to be that secure, secure position for defenders and uh, to lay it off to to attacking midfielders. Hundred percent, and. Uh... Now, Conrad, based on the players that we have right now, no signings, who would be your ideal starting lineup if our team is fully fit? Fully fit. <laughs> Gabriel, 
uh, our team is fully fit. Uh, fully fit. Well, um, yeah. You know, we've got um, ideal lineup. You know, as from a coach perspective, mm-hmm. this is this is from from a coach perspective. Is that it depends who you're playing and what um, you know what formation you're playing because there's different formations and different strategies you have to go into into games. So I can't give you my ultimate because unfortunately, if you're playing against a Man City and whether you're playing against a, uh, a Crystal Palace, you're going to use a different formation and you're going to use a different, um, a different what's name? Uh, different players you know we've got such a broad uh, broad spec now after with with no injuries uh, we've got our um, wing backs we've got our full backs we've got uh, the likes of uh, Eric Bailey uh, you know we've got now all our midfielders Paul Bokba is uh, is back um, Igalo who's uh, proved to me that you know he's he's a uh, a striker in and out mm. uh, but you know I wouldn't use him as a, as a starting lineup or well it, it just depends on, on the game uh, you know I've got four different formations that I would play and uh, Igalo would only be uh, participating in one of those formations whereby Rashford would be um, in all, all, all four of the others Okay, let me make things a little bit easier for you. We're playing Man City <laughs> at Old Trafford, and uh, I'm going to put a scenario there. This match means that we, if we beat Man City, we're in the top four. Because let's be real, that's where Man United are at the very moment. We beat City, we're in the top four. We fall short of a victory, so we do have to score. We fall short of a victory, and we don't make Champions League. What's the lineup that you would play? Sure, <laughs> that's a that's a tough one because uh, City, as we know, is uh, very attacking, mm-hmm. and uh, you know we would sit more defensive and then uh, you know do a bit of a of a counter counter attacking. Um, so a team like that, I would use the with the likes of a little bit of experience and uh, our youngsters mostly. Uh, I'll do maybe a four three three, which would be. Um, uh, Juan Bissaka, uh, Bailey, uh, Harry Maguire, Brandon Williams, those four back. We've mm-hmm. got, uh, you know, the wing backs that can go up front. We've got uh, Fred Scott and uh, Paul Pogba, and then Rashford, Bruno, and uh, Marshall. All right, now I see. Um, I, I, I think I'd play it a little bit different. I wouldn't have McTominay there. I'd have the other team. I'd have the same team that you have. Well, no, I wouldn't have McTominay and I wouldn't have Brendan Williams. I'd have Luke Shaw. I think uh, fair, fair, yeah. Luke, Luke, Shaw, Shaw's, Luke Shaw's experience, of, mm, mm. it would be a little bit better to have than Brendan Williams, in my opinion. And I would also, instead of McTominay, I would probably have Dan James there as well. We know that Manchester City, well, from at least what I've noticed, Manchester City's fullbacks, despite them being fast, they struggle against quick players. And Dan James, we know, is lightning quick. Um, so yeah. having Dan James, Marshall, and Rashford there will make things extremely difficult for them running around. And they'd sort of have like a free roll, you know, running around. And then with Pogba and Bruno there, they can pick out almost any pass. That's, my, that's my how only, I would see that. My only problem uh, with, uh, with playing against Man City and uh, playing uh, Daniel James is that Man City... Um, they are very strong tactically, yes. and uh, we saw it in the in the last game when they played against uh, Man United. When they went in for the tackles, it was like watching the the nineties football. That these guys were taking the ball along with the player. Yeah, and a guy like Daniel James can't handle that. Mm. When he's got the ball at his feet and uh, the players are five meters away from him, he'll make that run and he'll make, make a good proper run, which is good. But how many of those will be effective enough for him to to do a cross into to to the to to the middle into into the box, and that's where a player like uh, Scott for me is more of a of a stronger player that can withstand the dirty tactics. And let's not uh, let's not be coy here. Uh, Man City are, are known to to do dirty tactics when they're playing against a, a team, and they know that you know it's it's a team that if you don't stop them, you know they'll play play over you. But you know it's also good. Well, someone like Dan James, what would be good or what's good about him is that he draws fouls, 
and as you saw the last game that we played against City that first goal was an intelligent free kick by Bruno set in Martial volley we score you know so those things now with a player of Bruno's quality with the speed that Martial Rashford have up front uh, free kicks in the right position can be dangerous and that's something that Daniel James will definitely win because uh, he's just he's a player that's difficult to stop sometimes the only way to stop him is to foul him and if this guy is up front he fouls in the good position uh, that's a free kick that we can use to our advantage absolutely but as long as it's a uh, it's a tactical tactical foul and he knows when to fall <laughs> <laughs> and then and it's fine but you know you look at his age and you just know that you know um he's got a lot of determination he's got a lot of wit on him and uh, playing against smaller teams you know he can do it but when playing against uh, big teams when you know that uh, we've also got um, vr and all that you know that you know he can't take he can't take chances 